Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to your daily market insight video here on Thursday, January 27th. This is Hunter Mazingo coming to you just a few minutes after market close here in Jacksonville, Florida, 4.03 p.m. Eastern time to be exact. And today we've got more volatile trading. Uh, we've got just poor action in equities as the day progressed. And really this past week has been some of the most volatile uh, action we've seen in indices going back all the way to the COVID uh, crash of 2020. So we're gonna look at all of that and try and put it in context, look at the charts, all of that good stuff. But more importantly, we're also gonna look at what's actually holding up out there. And I'll, while it's not very much, we're gonna look at the charts that are still acting constructive uh, and they might not be the, the charts you would think would be uh, leaders in the market right now. So let's go ahead and get into what just happened, folks. So volatile trading and weakness persist. We faded as the day went on. Equities fade throughout the day, right? So we opened up, you know, the queues were up 1%, one and a half, two percent almost. We end up finishing down 1%. Par for the course the last couple of days, just some absolutely uh, brutal swings to the upside and the downside intraday after hours over the last, uh, over the course of this week. So G6 down 2.12, S&P down about a half percent, Q's down one, Dow uh, basically flat down 0.02%, mid caps down one and a half, and the Russell 2000 down 2.3 with a really ugly uh, reversal off of this key 2000 level or the 200 level on IWM. Market state is still in a correction. We have not taken out the lows from Monday uh, where we put in that hammer. Uh, so things are still, there is still potential out there that this could, uh, this low could hold, although the last uh, couple of days are not the most encouraging. Trend gauge, uh, no changes there either. Uh, market leaders, short-term and medium, all stay bearish long-term, still very, very, very close to going bearish. The S&P just flirting with the 200-day uh, moving average all around it, very close to it. Uh, so we'll give that to the end of the week. We're looking at the weekly candle there. Uh, especially if it looks like we're definitively going to finish the week out below the 200, that will most likely be moving towards bearish tomorrow. So uh, before we get to the charts, we're also going to look at interest rates. We're going to look at the dollar, which had a breakout today. Uh, as, as I always do, let's talk about Revere for a quick second. If you're interested in what we do, you can send me an email, hunter at revereasset.com, or you can send anybody here an, e an email, Dan, Tim, Merrill, Alex, or Don at revereasset.com. If you've got any questions on something in the video, you can send me an email. Well, you know, No matter how arbitrary or ancillary it may seem, I'm happy to answer your questions uh, no matter what it is. So let's get right into it. We're going to start here with the indices. We're going to look at the S&P first. Uh, so the S&P, like I said, was actually up today uh, for the better part of this morning but rejected here at this declining eight. And that's gonna be a recurring theme uh, we're gonna talk about a good bit is this declining eight is often a really good uh, metric or visual representation of the trend, especially the short to intermediate term trend. And right now you can see the S&P as well as the other indices that we're gonna look at having a tough time with that decline in eight, which just so happens to be corresponding to the 200 day here for the S&P. So you can see the way this is kind of shaping up here a little bit of a flag or consolidation. However, we don't like flag or consolidations below the 200. It's no different than if the S&P were to make a strong move to the upside and you get a nice flag, the moving averages catch up, that's a good thing. To the downside, not necessarily a good thing, right? You're just consolidating while these moving averages are rolling over and catching up to the downside. We see that happening with the eight day exponential. A lot of people also use the 10 simple, pretty similar. Uh, but we see the 21 rolling over, that type of thing. But for all intents and purposes, what's really going to matter here on the S&P is this low, uh, as well as the lows of the prior two days. But those can get sliced through quickly. Um, we're, what, we're, what you're looking for here is a definitive move over the last couple of days highs or a break below uh, these recent lows as well as this low. This low from Monday is going to be important on pretty much all stocks and all indices here. So QQQ, same story just farther from the 200. You see the eight day now catching up. We've almost got the 21 crossing down through the 200, which we haven't seen uh, since COVID of 2020, I believe. I could be wrong about that. Uh, but you see here the rejection at the eight day, the rejection at the eight day, uh, this 350 level, we've talked about it. I mentioned it on Monday, absolutely imperative 
for QQQ. If it can get back above 350, maybe it has a chance, get some closes above 350, it might have a chance. But right now it seems to be rejected at 350, as you can see today. Uh, this is a big level. You want to see the Qs back above this from a bull case, bear case. You're watching these lows here, 334.15 on the Qs. IWM, I mentioned, rejected at that key 200 level we've been talking about. This is just a very clean line in the sand here. And we've also got the eight day, kind of just the same as all these other charts. You see the eight day, it's very, very similar the last week and a half or two. More or less, Qs rejected at the 350 area. IWM and the Russell 2000 kind of rejected at this 200 or 2000 level for the actual Russell 2K index. Mid caps, similar story to small caps. They're farther and, and, and the Q is farther below the 200, but a similar pattern here. And we actually have mid caps breaking the lows of Monday, which is uh, pretty important here. And we've seen some of the mid cap grade semi companies really get hit like LAM Research, KLA 10 Core, those types of names. But uh, MDY, it looks like actually poking its nose below the Monday's low, uh, very important to note there. And lastly, the Dow, uh, DIA, this holding up a little bit better, uh, uh, but the more defensive, as you can see, DIA actually slightly green, the Dow Jones Industrial Average Actual Index basically flat to slightly red, but uh, similar pattern as to what you see with the S&P, a little bit of a flag type action here. We'll see what happens. We don't like consolidations below the 200. Uh, we want to see those consolidations above the moving averages, not below. But same story here with the declining eight on DIA. So let's get into a couple of uh, other things here before we look at actual stocks. And let's look at TLT or the inverse of TNX as we often talk about it. So TLT up today, right? Which means TNX down today or the 10 year yield is down today. So it was down slightly, but this 10 year yield is trying its best to stay above uh, this 1765 level here. So we've got yields moving higher for the most part, the trend is higher here, um, which is not necessarily great for growth stocks in particular. And then we've also got the dollar uh, breaking out today. So uh, some interesting extracurricular stuff going on here impacting the market in regards to rates and the dollar. Uh, and we saw how it played out with price in regards to the, uh, the indices and stocks today. However, I say all that to say, let's actually take a look at what is holding up and what's still looking good, what's hanging in there, what's got a constructive chart. And I'm not going to go too crazy on these because Don will be coming, covering a good bit of these uh, for the 21 over 21. Uh, but let's run through them very quickly. So Berkshire, this looked a lot better earlier this morning, but still very close to the 21 when 99% of other stocks are not necessarily close to the 21 unless you're an oil stock. So BRKB had been hanging in there, ABBV, ABV. Uh, big healthcare company also hanging in there. Some more here. I'm going to run through a handful of oils real quick. DVN, we still own this one. Very healthy looking stock for the time being. The energy and oil space continues to be a standout sector, uh, at least for the time being. ExxonMobil, also incredibly strong. Chevron, these two are maybe two of the strongest stocks in the market. Did not give back anything uh, as of recent. Uh, a couple more here. COP, or actually, Actually, let's go PXD. This is one that's been on a nice move recently. Pioneer Resources, uh, another strong chart. Halliburton, oil and gas services, field services, also a really strong chart. So uh, a lot of the healthy charts are concentrated in the oil space. However, as we showed you with ABBV and BRKB, there are some constructive charts elsewhere. Believe it or not, CVS, here's a constructive chart for you above the 21. Not your normal stock that you would expect to be a leader, but for the time being, the stock is acting like the leader. Uh, insurance has also been uh, relatively well performing or at least not subject to the weakness that the market has been evidenced by. Look at the RS line here. You see on AIG, pretty much the start of the year. I mean, not on AIG, Aflac, uh, big time increase in RS, kind of the same thing we saw here with, uh, we'll look at CVS as well, just to go back to it. CVS, same thing, just RS line, just going through the roof here since the beginning of the year. So we'll see if these end up holding up, if they continue to be leaders or if they ultimately succumb to market weakness at that process. But for the time being, these are hanging in there. So let's run through some other stuff quickly uh, that actually uh, had a decent day today. Procter & Gamble, slightly green on a day where the market is red. 
this has been the uh, the go-to for the consumer staples uh, ETF. As you can see, Procter & Gamble, probably one of the, the best known consumer staples stock out there. Uh, slightly green today, still trying to hang in there. Uh, a couple of more here, Vertex, BRTX, up a little bit today. You can see this gap here started an uptrend on BRTX, uh, but looking back on the left-hand side of the chart, still some work to do here, but nonetheless in an uptrend right now. Couple more here, ZIM, a shipping company, which as you can see is at the top of the ranked industry groups, number eight out of 197, back above the 21, looking pretty decent here on ZIM. Uh, XLU, the utilities ETF, one of the leading ETFs today is actually green. XLV, also uh, a leading sector today. And then lastly, XLP, another leading sector today. Whenever I list all three of those as leading sectors, usually means that there's some type of fear prevalent or uh, growth stocks are not doing well because those are kind of the, I guess what I would say is the antithesis of the G6 index, right? So defensive sectors, the strongest today. Uh, and we also saw names like Tesla, Nvidia and AMD have really bad days, uh, but we saw some of the big tech stuff uh, try and prop it up. St names like Netflix, which has been murdered uh, recently, but up 9%. You know, so that impacts the indices. It's still a relatively big company. Names like Microsoft, who are still green today. Uh, so we saw some of these, the, the FANG names hanging in there as green, kind of keeping the indices green up until the end of the day. Uh, but Tesla really taken to the woodshed today, down about 10 or 11%, as you can see, almost to the 200 day here. Uh, this has been a wild ride on Tesla. After hours yesterday, it was down 6%, then it was green, and then you get this today. Uh, so Tesla, a really, really nasty day. NVIDIA, which was up 4% or so this morning, ends up being down 3.5%, 4% by the end of the day. AMD down about 7 or 8% today. Uh, I mean, these are leading semi-stocks, and they're really having a tough go of it here. And it really, it's not just the AMDs and the, and the NVIDIAs. It's some of the lesser known stocks too. LAM Research uh, really having a time, I mean, from 7.30 to 5.50 here in about a week and a half or two. Applied Materials, which we talked about, was hanging in there, showing strength, and then it's fallen off the table or fallen off the uh, the grid a little bit too. So, uh, less and less places to hide, less and less pockets of uh, of relative strength. But where that's our job is to find those areas. And so we brought you some today. Don's going to have a lot more on the twenty one over twenty one tomorrow. Uh, but hopefully that's helpful. You can at least put together a watch list of some stuff that's hanging in there and working, uh, and see if it continues to do so or if it ultimately uh, falls to uh, pressure to the market's, market's weakness as well. So that's going to wrap up the video for today. I uh, hope you all enjoyed it, and I will see you guys on the podcast this weekend and on next Monday's video. Have a great weekend, everybody.